Hey. You know, fat guys shouldn't wear striped shirts. You know that, right? He was like, "Oh, congratulations on the new shirt! I got a lot of shirts. I just don't wear them in videos. <laughs> no one's ever gonna accuse me of being dirty, all right?" Some guy said, "You're wearing the same shirt every day. How often do you shower? <laughs> At least once a day. Quite often, twice a day. Um, I like it when people assume things about you." Started a series on things that. Uh, don't exist because human beings love to invent things. People spend a certain percentage of every day fantasizing about things that don't exist or they have false images of themselves like maybe some horrible evil hairy guy that looks in the mirror when he brushes his teeth in the morning and you know he looks in the mirror at himself. That's not me but by the way I definitely never ever thought that. He looks in the mirror and he's like he thinks he's the most handsome creature alive. <laughs> you know? In other words a fantasy right um recently this has been an uh, had been an issue because i mentioned it in some other videos and people think some of them anyway think that i came up with this idea on my own or something about electrons which of course is a farce and importantly as i've said many times if you're a hammer everything is a nail if you're an atomist everything is a particle the notion of an electron is completely an arbitrary force she started out a series on things that don't exist, like waves, emptiness, space, time, force. There are a few of them, but uh, electrons is uh, electron is uh, is a huge one. Explaining, by the way, an electron microscope also too is very easy, and I've done it a thousand times, including my book. Um, Eric Dollard actually called an electron a broken loose holdfast. I don't know if you know what a holdfast is. Is that ratcheting strap that ratchets stuff down? like on a truck bed, for example. Really accurate. Um, the so-called discoverer of the principle, and it is a principle, the phenomena is not in denial. The discoverer of the principle of the electron, who's J.J. Thompson, he never thought it was a particle. Yeah? No. Specifically, J.J. Thompson said an electron is one unit of dielectric induction, and that's exactly what it is. Um, the idea, and people still suffer from this uh, mental uh, malady, that like an atom, for example, you know, it's got a little tiny nucleus right at the center of protons and neutrons, and around it in different shells are all these spinning uh, Saturnian model, spinning electrons. It's completely ridiculous. And uh, some people say, well, I had got a degree in chemistry, you know, you have to dismiss uh, dismiss uh, valence bonding you know it's, you can't do that of course these electrons exist the principle does exist and actually you don't need a charge carrying particle which is an illogical impossibility to explain uh, covalent bonding it's not required at all the only thing you need is um, charge capacitance and proximity and so there are these uh, charge capacitances I mean, you could to say, well, at this level there's X, Y, Z charge capacitance, and at a higher uh, distance. And of course, explaining covalent bonding is it's not difficult. You don't need this uh, particle, which is completely an arbitrary abstraction with no basis in reality. Tesla railed against it. So did Oliver Heaviside. So did. Don't you find it interesting? People attacking me for dismissing an electron, and I don't dismiss the phenomena. What I'm saying is the electron is. And it's completely ridiculous. It's hyper hyper illogical that an electron is this charge carrying. So, and this is what the scientists will say: Well, the electrons charge carrying particles. So all movement of power is the movement of electrons. Yes, right. And they all do say that, and they all do believe that. But they talk about an electron like it's a little car. You know, it's like a particle car, and inside of it's a charge. And <laughs> when it wants to. You know, dissipate a charge, the little car opens up and the charge comes in, or the charge comes... I mean, that's ridiculous. Listen to that sentence closely, which is their language, their verbiage. Charge carrying particle. Either the particle... If, let's just go with the particle abstraction for a second, which is completely ludicrous. Let's just assume that the, the particle, uh, i.e. the electron, exists, which of course it doesn't. So you're saying that the particle itself is a charge, or as they say, a charge carrying particle. In other words, the charge is one thing, and the particle is another. So if the, <laughs> if the charge leaves the electron particle, is it then therefore a particle, I mean, therefore uh, then a, a particle by definition? Completely ludicrous. 
charge carrying. But it's like talking about a clown car. I mean, a clown car op door opens up and X Y Z number of clowns get out of a clown car. Like uh, you know, the charge is being dissipated from uh, this particle car. Anyway, the so-called electrons are not particles nor objects or uh, subjects, but are the dynamic principle of discharge. And are certainly not charge carriers. Fields are not particles, nor are they electrons. Nor, assuredly, are there energy discharges in the vacuum of space involving electrons. Not to mention that space is not a field uh, terminal. Space has never been a terminal for any field. That's, uh, that's an absolute fact, by the way. An electron is a fiction of fallacious observation and even more faulty mental acuity. Spawned naturally from the minds of materialists is meant atomists. Electricity is the ether in a state of dynamic polarization. Magnetism is the ether in a state of dynamic circular polarization upon itself. Specifically, magnetism is a dielectric field. And is the radiative termination of electrical discharge. Dielectricity is the ether under stress or strain. The motion and strains of the ether give rise to electrification, whose unit is conceptualized incorrectly as this electron fantasy, kind of like a unicorn or a leprechaun. J.J. Thompson developed the ether atom uh, ideas of Mr. Faraday into his electronic corpuscle, the indivisible unit. One corpuscle terminates on one ferratic tube of force, and this quantifies as one column. The corpuscle is not an electron. It is constituent of what today is known correct, incorrectly as an electron. Thompson relates 1,000 corpuscles per electron. Once again, we get back to the clown car. You know, the electron has got 1,000 corpuscles of <laughs> charge. <laughs> it's ridiculous. In this view taken uh, by uh, W. Crookes, J.J. Thompson, Nikola Tesla, the cathode ray is not, an elec not uh, electrons, the movement of electrons, but is actuality that of corpuscles of the ether. That's a quote from uh, Eric Dollard accurately. This is a Nikola Tesla interview from 1928. Now, uh, before I get to this interview with Nikola Tesla, I have to reiterate the fact that these are the gods of electrical field theory. They all tell you the same thing. There's no such thing and there's an electron particle, but maybe, maybe you think you're smarter than Tesla, James Kirk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, Charles Pretty. No, you're not even close to one of them. And that's not an insult. That's a demonstrable fact. On the whole subject of the matter, in fact, Dr. Tesla holds views that are strange, uh, startlingly original. He disagrees with the accepted atomic theory of matter, does not believe in the existence of an electron as pictured by science today. To account for its uh, apparently small mass, science uh, today conceives the electron as a hollow sphere, a sort of bubble, such as a bubble could exist in a medium of gas or liquid because of its internal pressure and not altered by deformation. But if, as supposed, the internal pressure of an electron is due to the repulsion of electrical masses, the slightest conceivable deformation must result in the destruction of the bubble, just to mention another improbability. Um, this is from the article, The Famous Prophet of Science Looks into the Future. Here's also to Nikola Tesla. My ideas regarding the electron are at variance with those generally entertained. I held hold it as a relatively large entity carrying a surface charge and is not an elementary unit or particle. When the electron leaves the electrode, uh, the principle of the electron leaves the electrode of high potential and in a high vacuum it carries an electrostatic charge many times greater than that of normal. In the theoretical treatment of, uh, this is Einstein by the way, I can quote him, from uh, this is uh, Einstein Electrons and his Relativity, Random House Publication, 1960. In the theoretical treatment of these electrons, we are faced with the difficulty of the electrodynamic theory itself unable to give an account for their nature. For since electrical masses constituting the electron which, uh, would necessarily be scattered under the influence of their mutual repulsion unless there are forces of another kind uh, operating between them, the nature of which has hitherto remained uh, obscure to us. Uh, here we go. Uh, Walter Russell accurate. To describe an electron as a negatively charged, uh, you should read Walter Russell's Universal One. To describe an electron as a negatively charged body is equivalent to saying that it is an expanding, contracting particle. There's no such condition in nature as a negative charge. This is correct. Nor are there uh, negatively charged particles. Charge and discharge are opposite conditions, such as filling and emptying, or compressing and expanding are opposite conditions. There is no rest mass to the principle of an electron. It is uh, given here that an electron is no more than a lo broken loose holdfast. In other words, a ratcheting strap holdfast. 
under the grip te grip of the tensions within the dielectric uh, lines of force. This is just in reference to uh, dielectric uh, torsion, which is what dielectricity is. Ether under stress or strain is dielectricity. They are broken ends of the split in half package of spaghetti. You know, you break spaghetti, there's little broken uh, pieces everywhere. Uh, obviously, this reasoning is not welcome in uh, today's uh, realm of Einstein's theory of relativity. That's Eric Dollard, who, by the way, despises Einstein for very, very good reason. This is from Charles Proteus Steinmet, a god of electrical field theory, undeniably so. This is from electrical discharges, waves, and impulses. Unfortunately, to a large extent, dealing with the dielectric field of the prehistoric conception of electrostatic charge, the electron on the conductor, this idea still exists. He considers it a psychosis, a, you know, stupidity, you know, and insanity. And by its use, destroys the analogy between the two components of the electrical field, the magnetic and the dielectric. This makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily complicated. Brilliant books, free download on archive.org. Um, the idea of electricity as a flow of electrons in a conductor was regarded by Oliver Heaviside as a psychosis. This encouraged Heaviside, a true genius, the actual guy who understood uh, what gravity is. He actually uh, wrote a, cute, a small little article on what gravity really is, and he was uh, very, very accurate. He was on the cusp of a big discovery. This encouraged Heaviside to begin a series of writings. Electrons as a separate distinct entity does not really exist. These are merely bumps in something called the field. That's Dr. Stephen Biller. You cannot say that stretching a trillion rubber bands nailed to the floor and releasing them or breaking them, uh, they're lines of force that this is a flow of electrons. This is ridiculous. Uh, this discharge is a terminal movement in the systems of inductance or dielectric capacitance. There are no discrete particles in the universe, and certainly none that mediate charge, discharge, magnetism, um, electromagnetism, gravity, radiation, only fields. Of course, a field is just an ether perturbation modality. The so-called electrons are not particles nor objects or subjects, but they're dynamic principles of discharge and certainly not so charged carriers. Fields are not particles and are not electrons, nor assuredly are there any energy discharges in the vacuum of space involving electrons. The electron principle thereof, uh, this, this charge carrying uh, fiction, is a, a fallacious uh, nonsense observation, even more faulty. Mental acuity spawned uh, naturally from the minds of materialists, or specifically the atomists. Atomism has been around for millennia. Um, electricity is the ether in a state of dynamic polarization. Magnetism, once again, is a state of dynamic circular polarization and is the radiative termination of an electrical discharge. Dielectricity, once again, is the uh, ether under stress or strain. Um, if you ever, uh, just, here's a way to get them too. There's a million ways to get them on an electron. Say, and they'll always answer the same. Says, is uh, the electron the uh, the charge carrying particle that uh, that uh, is the flow of electricity? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Ask them to explain wireless power induction in a vacuum. Oh, that'll confuse them. They'll say, well, it's lines of force. Well, force is a conceptual abstraction. No such thing as force. Force is something done by something upon something else. Force of what, by what, and upon what. Those are lines of force. That's what's going on in wireless power induction. Well, we've already dismissed force because force is not a thing. Force is something done by something upon something else. Lines are completely nonsense. There's no such thing as lines in nature. These are just lines that human beings see. Okay, so this is part two. For some reason, my uh, camera cut out on the last part of uh, my electrons video. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it was a specter. Um, things happen. Format the SD card. Um, but uh, finishing up on uh, the electron, this conceptual abstraction uh, reified by these atomists is completely arbitrary. It has absolutely no basis in reality. The notion you know, that uh, electricity is a flow of electrons. For example, they think that uh, power flow, uh, ludicrously, you know, through the power lines in the backyard of your yard or front yard, depending on where you live at, of course, 
you know, there's every microsecond, there's trillions and trillions of these electron particles flowing through the power lines, completely ludicrous. And if you listen to what they say once again, and it's incredibly important that you do, we'll call it the charge carrying particle. So just like a clown car, you know, there's the electron itself, which is obviously not the charge, but it's carrying a charge. Well, that's demonstrably illiterate and completely nonsensical. Um, when you actually ask them to explain, and I've done this many times to PhD professors of, uh, of uh, physics, about wireless power induction, they say, what's lines of force? That's what's going on. What do you mean lines of force? Force is something done by something uh, upon something else. There's no such thing as force itself. It is what is done. And uh, lines, of course, is just another conceptual abstraction that they'll use to support, you know, their explanation of how wireless power induction works. But they've never defined a field. And they actually can't tell you how wireless power induction works because when you actually remove the wires, then the whole flow of electrons completely breaks down. Humorously, however, when, uh, you know, you attack the obvious fallacies and logical inconsistencies of their little unicorn, you know, the charge-carrying particle, which in itself is ludicrous on many different levels, what they'll do is that they'll use uh, another, uh, you know, throw glitter in your face and run away tactic and talk about lines of force. That's like them trying to support uh, the notion of a unicorn by saying, well, you know, my uncle, I mean, my neighbor, excuse me, is a leprechaun, and he has a unicorn, and, you know, he's named uh, the unicorn Daisy, and, you know, my neighbor has a... So they use one fantasy to back up another, you know, the, the leprechaun that owns a <laughs> the leprechaun that owns a unicorn. And what amazes me not so much is that somebody would have this, uh, you know, illogical, crazy belief system, which is what it is, a belief system. It's not logical, it's not scientific, it's not even sensible. But that other people can't see, well, yeah, that makes sense. You know, that guy's got a PhD. He's teaching at uh, XYZ College. And people really do only look at it as superficial as that. It's like, why would you do that? You know, shouldn't you be questioning, you know, the... And, and it's okay not to have the answers to things, but we never go looking to the answers to things that we already think we know the answers to, and these people are exactly like that. They were taught to believe something. Go home and read this, memorize it, we got a test on it. You know, if you keep repeating the same stuff, you know, that the guy above you believes in, and, you know, they, they rubber stamp you, well, you know, you're, you're uh, you know, you got a doctorate, you know, you've been certified to believe the same nonsense that I do. Um, but maybe you think you're smarter than Tesla, Faraday, or Steinmetz, or Heaviside. I, don't, I shouldn't mention Faraday regarding the electrons since he wasn't uh, around when the so-called discovery of the electron manifested from J.J. Thompson, who's just called it one unit of dielectric induction. But you're not, and that's, you know, it should be demonstrable to you that it's important that, you know, these geniuses of field theory the utmost genius has said that there's no such thing as a charge-carrying particle, and there's not. Here's something else, and nobody should ever do, it, do this. It's actually an experiment that's, it's not a real experiment. This is actually how they harvest electricity is in certain places in the world where it actually, well, I won't get into that. You could actually place a copper coil in close proximity to the flow of power. It's dangerous, don't even think about doing it. This is a thought experiment, which, of course, works. And you'll actually uh, get, uh, you know, you charge your battery, you can charge your, uh, you know, feed the, the items in your house. The problem is, of course, if you get it too close, there'll be an arc of electricity that would be very, very dangerous that would move from the power lines over to uh, the induction coil. It's like, well, I thought you said that, you know, electricity was the, uh, the flow of electrons through those power lines. But, yeah, that's exactly right. So, well... Those power lines are there. My induction coil is kind of close, might be dangerously close. So, you know, where is the power coming from? Well, it's lines of force. It's from the field surrounding the power line. And this has been done where they actually put uh, not high voltage power lines, but uh, power lines through a piece of paper. You, know, you sprinkle iron filings, you can actually see the field around it. It's like, well, this is true. That is the field around it, but you've never defined a field. 
and force is not a thing. Force is something done by something upon something else. And this idea of lines is like, you know, introducing your unicorn to back up the idea that, uh, introducing your leprechaun to back up your idea that unicorns exist, which of course is completely ludicrous. And it shocks me that people can't see through this. You know, maybe it shouldn't shock me anymore, but I wanted to do a series, and sorry I had to redo the second part of the video again because of my video device for whatever reason, but you know, this thing does not exist. The principle itself does exist, obviously and demonstrably so. No one's denying that. The point is, is the notion of a charge-carrying particle, and just listen to it again. You know, charge-carrying, well, that means the charge is here and the electron is here. Charge-carrying electron is a charge-carrying particle. Oh, so the electron's not the charge, it's actually carrying a charge, kind of like a clown car is carrying clowns. Well, no. Well, you just, you said it, and they all say this. Charge carrying particle. Well, so the charge is not the electron itself, it's carrying the charge. Well, am I the only one that can't see how demonstrably nonsensical this is? Am I the only one? Anyway, the uh, charge carrying particle, the electron, according to the Tesla, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Dollard, and others, J.J. Thompson, it's not, it doesn't exist. It absolutely does not exist. The phenomenon, of course, does exist, undeniably so. I never said or implied that, but... Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this video has uh, made you think, at least. And goodbye.